You know, while talking about, when you're talking about biology, everything seems to come back to proteins. Proteins are what make up the cell, which the cell makes up every living thing. Every living thing has a cell, has multiple. Um, proteins have many functions from providing each cell with its structure to carrying out messages from one to the other um, to an enzyme to an enzyme for a particular reaction. The only way to fully understand protein's function is to understand the structure because protein um, function is always equal to the structure. Proteins are composed of 20 amino acids in a unique order in a side chain which gives a protein its specific properties. The way that these 20 amino acids are sequenced together is the primary structure. This is very broad and has great diversity. Um, if you want to get more specific, you can move on to the secondary structure or the repeated folding of the polypeptide chain. This consists of alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets, which are both bonded together by hydrogen bonds. But this secondary structure does not include the R groups. If you wanted to look at the folding and twistings and the R groups, you're looking at their tertiary structure which is the full 3D conformation. When proteins are enzymes, their function is to catalyze or speed up a certain reaction. Um, this is where we bring in pepsin, which is there to speed up the process of breaking down uh, proteins in our stomach. The first protein to ever be discovered and crystallized, pepsin, was found in 1836 by Theodore Schwann. He named the protein after the word pepsis, which means digestion, which fits completely its function. Um, it was then the first protein to be crystallized as well to prove that it was in fact a protein by John Howard Northrop in 1929. The main thing pepsin's going to do for us is degrade protein in the stomach such as meat and eggs, also dairy and seeds. Um, it is very important to us, but it's not just sitting in our stomachs ready to go. Um, it's actually first called pepsinogen. Um, glands in the membrane lining of the stomach stores the inactive protein, which is pepsinogen. Uh, so, um, secretions of the hormones gastrin and secretin stimulate this pepsinogen, and then it's mixed with the hydrochloric acid in your body. Um, when this is mixed, it is becoming pepsin. So hydrochloric acid is very important to turning this inactive enzyme pepsinogen into pepsin. If we didn't have it, it wouldn't happen. Uh, the hydrochloric acid is also important to keep the pH levels in the range where pepsin can survive. It can't survive um, in any pH, the optimal pH it wants is 2, but it'll take anything from 1 to 3 or 1.5 to 2.5. Um, it's very important to help us break down these proteins because once it does, proteins can readily be available to go into our bloodstream and help many parts of our body. Even some of the pepsin itself it actually dissolves into our bloodstream, helping break down larger protein molecules that were dissolved by the large intestine. So it's not just chilling sitting there breaking down proteins it's actually going to go in and help in other places as well pepsin consists of a subunit of 326 amino acids where its original form pepsinogen has an additional 44 so when it's um changes over those those turn into something else pepsin cleaves um many many things um like fee, val, glen, glue, all, lu, tie, lu, gly, fee, and fee. <laughs> it is classified under billable, billable, so it's like um, circular, which is very important so the active site can form. It has two domains which are very close when the protein is folded properly. Um, the formation of the active site is due to the interactions of each residue located on the end of each of the lobes, um, which are held together by hydrogen bonds. A very large portion of the pepsin residues are buried because they are polar. Pepsin's secondary structure includes both alpha helix and beta pleated sheets, um, but is composed of mostly beta pleated sheets. 44% of the 
enzyme is actually beta pleated sheets and 14% is the alpha helixes. Its secondary structure is particularly important when carrying out its role as an enzyme. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a lot of subdomains to pepsin which can interact with inhibitors and help the enzyme adjust to substrate structures. Um, a big huge example of this and a really important one is the flexible flap that's produced near the cleft. This is what is going to allow uh, things in and out of the cell and it is composed of two beta strands. This particular secondary structure gives the enzyme its function in the cell. Um, when discussing the genetic code, people are still trying to, I mean, it's, it's always going to be researched and I found a lot of things on people still trying to figure it out. Um, a study done by Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation found many things. When pepsin was treated to find the sequence, five fragments were purified. Four of the fragments amino acid sequence accounted for 290 residues. It also contains a 37 residue carboxyl terminal fragment. They also discovered the location of aspartyl residues on the active site and three disulfide bridges. In relation to denaturing this protein, pepsin cannot refold at the active site after being exo exposed to something that will denature it. Research is still being done in the relation to this field. Um, so there were a lot of things that people are trying to connect pepsin with with stomach problems, um, but a lot of them that were found is the gastro esophageal reflux disease and laryngeal cancer. This can be caused by pepsin. Um, the chronic backflow of pepsin and acid from the stomach will reach the esophagus which will form the basis for the reflux condition. The pepsin and acid will travel all the way to the larynx where they cause a lot of damage to the mucosa there. Um, this will produce many symptoms such as chronic cough, um, hoarseness of the throat, um, to constriction of the vocal cords, involuntary, which can be pretty bad, or uh, spasms of the larynx. So protein pepsin enzyme of the, of the protein is like all proteins. Its structure is very important in relation to the function. Um, its secondary structure is most important when discussing its role as an enzyme to break down protein in the stomach so mammals can utilize other proteins and to secrete it in the bloodstream. Its beautiful and plentiful amount of beta pleated sheets are very important as well as they form the flap that allows substrates to move in and out of the cell.